Hi, I'm Mrs. Sizemore, and today I'm going to teach you about absolute pitch names on the treble clef. What that means is that when you look at music, the music notes on the staff have names that they always retain. That means that it doesn't matter what you do, those notes are the same. So when it's an absolute pitch name, I'm going to show you on the treble clef right here. Every good boy does fine is on a line. So these are the lines, and you'll notice even though the words are written on the the written the words are actually written right next to them on the spaces. But if you look at the note heads, that's the circles, the dots. One, two, three, four, five. Do you see how the lines are going through the note heads? That's because when they're on a line. The line's note head, that's this part right here, has to go through the line. So it's not sitting on a line. It's different than when you have sentences that you write on top of a line. These go through the line. If they go through the line, they're considered a line note. So every good, no every good boy does fine is on a line. Now, you'll notice I have another staff because we, only, we don't have music notes just on the lines. We have music notes music notes on the spaces as well. And notice I said this is for the treble clef. Do you see this little treble clef in the corner? Treble is what um, boys and girls using the treble clef right now, grown adults that are women singing the treble clef. Um, as the boys in our class get older, they're going to switch from singing in the treble clef to singing in something called the bass clef. That looks like that. Um, but they usually won't be doing that until you're midway through middle school and into high school. So I'm going to erase it because we're not singing in that right now. Um, the bass clef is also used for people who play uh, trombone, tuba, um, the lower lower um, notes of the orchestra, bass clarinet. Um, they use the bass clef. Um, so. Anyway, we're going to go back to the treble clef because that's what we're talking about. So here is my treble clef right there. And now I'm going to put them on the, on the spaces. So in between the spaces is my note. So here's my first note. One, two, and if you notice what's going to happen is I'm actually going to switch the line next to it to go upside down. This is called the note head, okay? It's sitting on the staff, but when you get to the middle space, your note head still keeps going up. It doesn't change, so I still have my note heads going up, but instead, the, um, the line connected to the note head, and for the life of me, I can't remember what it's called right now, goes upside down. So you can see this one's on the middle line and it goes up. It can also go down. But anything past the middle line that gets higher. So not line one, not line two. But if it's line three or higher, line four, line five, any of those, then it automatically gets turned upside down. That's so that it saves space for publishing. They started doing, doing that hundreds of years ago. So now that's just how it's done. Because that's how they were able to save space on a page. So you'll notice this is in the spaces. So the spaces actually spell a word. This is the note F, right? So F, A, here's my next note, C, here's my next note, E. So face equals space. So the top part is every good boy does fine is on a line and the bottom one is face equals space because that's going to tell you where all the spaces are on your line. Um, so these are really important as you get older. Um, when you start to play instruments, you'll see it a lot more. As you become an older musician and you're singing more, You'll learn to read notes on the staff and follow them. And 
you're not necessarily going to be singing do re mi all the time that's the sol fa um, because solfege can move around but this is absolute because it's an absolute pitch name absolute pitch names they can't change they're never going to change they always stay the same so um, if I grab my recorder here for a second and I see this line, every good boy does fine. Here's a G, right? This is a G because it starts with the letter G for good. Every good boy does fine, right? So here's E, G, B, D, F. My recorder sees this as a G. So my recorder plays it as a G. Three fingers. I can go to my piano, and on my piano, it's also a G. That's the same note. Doesn't matter what instrument it is, it's always going to be a G. And so that's why they call it absolute pitch names, because no matter what instrument you go back and forth between, it's still going to be the, the note G. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.